tell us what, what you've been launching there at CES. I guess uh, not typical for an airline to be there. It's very much uh, app-based uh, expansion. No, it was great. We were, uh, we delivered, I delivered the opening keynote for CES and first time an airline had ever done that. In fact, the opening question that the, the CEO of, of uh, CES gave me is why is an airline here? And it gave me the opportunity to tell our story. And our story really is about all the investment we've made to improve the quality of our operations. We're the on-time leader. We've got the most reliable, highest performance air, uh, airline in the industry, investing billions and billions of dollars in the in-flight experience. And now we're doing the same thing to improve the ground experience. And you see our airports going up in many parts of the country, the improvements. We need to bring technology alongside that, whether it's digital, whether it's the Fly Delta app, whether it's new technologies like parallel reality. And that was our opportunity to describe that. Um, Ed, in terms of the, the new technology uh, aspect, to, to, to what extent is it only really for on the ground services for the consumer? And, and are you disappointed that free Wi Fi on all flights is still not a reality? Well, we're working on free Wi Fi and we're committed to getting to free Wi Fi, but it has to be Wi Fi that has the expectations that consumers deserve high quality content, high quality bandwidth and speed. We're not quite there yet, but we're on a path to getting there. And I, I said this morning that we will get there within the next two years, sooner if we can. And then when we get there, we have to make it at the same price that you pay on the ground, which is generally free. So Ed, you explained a little bit about technology helping the operations of Delta. What about sort of on the consumer facing side? When we all travel, it has become a very stressful experience. Obviously, there are many players that yep. tie in together from the TSA at security, the airline itself, as well as the airport operations. But have you really announced any technology that make my experience potentially less stressful? Sure. Well, that was one of the other key themes, Courtney, of the presentation is that we need to find ways to de-stress uh, consumers as they're traveling. And we all know that there's stress in the environment when you travel, particularly in the ground experience. So we announced together with Lyft a closer integration so that when you're work traveling on Delta using the Fly Delta app, you'll be able to monitor your arrival or your destination information through Lyft. They'll have cars there available waiting for you. We unveiled a vision of the future because it was really a, vis a visionary presentation going out over the next five years, whereby you don't even need to bring your bag to the airport because we know how much stress is involved in bringing your bag and checking it or finding an overhead bin for it. Why not have the opportunity to have us get your bag from your home to your destination so it's waiting for you when you arrive at that hotel? If you're in a business meeting, you can go directly to the business meeting. Or if you're going to a new city, you have a chance to go explore it. I mean, there's many, many things that we're doing, but we've got the credibility because we've got the core reliability and performance of the airline fixed. And now it's our opportunity to bring technology to make a real difference with our consumers. Ed, I wanted to ask you about Boeing, uh, if I may. Another story relating to, to the timing of the return of the 737 MAX today. Today, the airline uh, saying that it's going to push for uh, simulator training for all pilots moving forward. But either way, there's been delay after delay uh, as to when this plane might return. To what extent are industry executives like yourself losing faith in the company whenever it makes any target, whether it's related to the 737 MAX uh, return or anything else? Are you losing faith? Uh, in, in the ability of this company to make uh, to meet the promises it makes? Well, Wolf, Wolf, as you know, we don't fly the 737 MAX. So for us, we're not directly impacted by that issue. We've been monitoring it and we've been in touch with Boeing around it. Yes, we have to, do have concerns regarding what it's going to mean for future development and future technology innovation in our space. You know, we have basically two suppliers in our space. We have Airbus and we have Boeing. And we need Boeing to get through this crisis. We need them to get focused on the innovation and the development of the new technologies for the new aircraft that we're waiting to order and to continue to push our, our, our uh, industry forward, not just from an efficiency uh, with cleaner, cleaner emissions, but also better comfort for our customers. So I have confidence in Dave Calhoun. I've known Dave for a long time. Uh, I think he's the right man for the job. We're staying in close touch, but it, it is frustrating, yes. <laughs> Uh, that said, that frustration aside, Ed, is there part of you that actually weirdly welcomes further delays in the 737 MAX? Of course, the original tragedies 
uh, aside because you don't fly the plane? Have there been some gains in market share for you because of the delays in the 737 Max's return? No, we're not. We're not. We're hoping for that plane to get in the sky. You know, you're right. I mean, we have on the margin had some additional revenue and some additional share that we've gained because the plane has not been flying. But all the other airlines that do fly the plane, I think, have done a very good job of covering off their key competitive markets. You know, the great thing about airplanes is they move and they can go fly to different revenue pools to make certain that they're protecting their key markets. So we've had some marginal benefit when it does come back. I'm sure there will be some marginal uh, negative impact. I think it'll be small for us. But, you know, we really want it. It's not good for any of us to have that plane out of the sky. Ed, there's been a lot of focus on the energy market this week, as you well know, after the events in Iran with the assassination of the general there. What is your outlook for jet fuel prices? I know the airline stocks got taken down a bit yesterday as energy prices moved higher, albeit sort of preparing some of those losses by the end of the session. How are you focused on the cost of jet fuel going forward this year? Well, we watch it closely, Courtney, as you can imagine. You know, we've built our business to be able to sustain short-term shocks like this. And, and, and we talk about short-term shocks going from 60 to $70 a barrel. You know, we've been built on, on a model where we had to cover over $100 a barrel not that long ago. So I think the industry is in a, is in a good spot. I know Delta's in a very good spot. We've built our business to cover oil, and we expect oil to be range-bound somewhere between 60 and $80 a barrel where it's been for the last several years. If it gets above 80, obviously there's some decisions we'll have to take over time. But right now, there's no change to our uh, strategy. We've got, a, uh, we've got a great plan for 2020, and we're not seeing any, any real negative impacts from you know, the most recent short-term spike we've seen this week. Ed, I wanted to ask you about the investment you made in, in LATAM Airlines uh, Group. Is that a sign yeah. that, that you think the domestic uh, airline travel market is somewhat saturated and, and, and X growth? And if at the moment 72% of your, your revenue uh, comes from the domestic market, where will that number be in, in five years? Significantly lower than 72%? Well, it's a fair point because over time, not yet, but over time, the domestic market will, will become relatively saturated. You see how congested air travel can be at times in our key markets. You know, we're building bigger airplanes and we're building bigger airports, but we're not building new destinations in the domestic market to fly. You know, we're doing well. We're growing 5 7% a year, and we'll continue. I see that growth rate staying uh, pretty strong over the next couple of years. But over time, certainly as we enter the next century of our, of our uh, future, which will ha be happening in the next few years, international, I think, is the place we need to be. That's why we're invested investors in LATAM and the great airline. They have 40% market share throughout all of South America, really important future partner for us. That's why we're investors in Virgin, Air France, KLM, Korean, uh, China Eastern. Uh, we've taken a contrarian view that you know, we need to get inside these other airlines, not just as commercial partners, but as equity owners to try to bring a longer ter uh, term opportunity for us and for them to the future.